The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, my name is Beverly Bolnick, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at NMP, and I would like to welcome you to National Mortgage Professional Magazine's webinar titled, Refis Are Drying Up, Learn to Attract Productive Referral Partners and Home Buyers, sponsored and presented by Lender ProLink. I would like to thank all of our webinar attendees for taking the time out of their busy days for this very valuable and informative webinar and our ongoing series of webinars. Today's webinar will be conducted by Elijah Young, Lender ProLink's growth coach, partner, and VP of marketing. Elijah Young has served as a mar marketing thought leader for the last 10 plus years, and he has helped organizations and brands gain more clients and move forward in the digital age. As a self-professed marketing nerd, he sees that most people view marketing all wrong, and he believes marketing's impact should be transparent, easy to understand, simple to produce ROI, and connect with its intended target. He is an extremely vibrant leader who shuns stale, old-school marketing tactics that just don't work. Being the youngest Gen Xer or the oldest millennial, he understands the importance of digital connection with today's savvy home buyer. He will surely keep you engaged and give you some great actionable tools to help your origination efforts. If you have questions during the webinar, please be sure to ask them on the GoToWebinar console in the questions tab. Also, we will be sending out the PowerPoint presentation and a link to the recording of the webinar to all webinar registrants tomorrow for your future reference. Without any further ado, I'd like to turn things over to Elijah Young. Hey, 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 everyone. Uh, glad to be on the call this morning. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, we hope that you get a ton of value out of hearing uh, from this training. Obviously, we know that as, as rates are, are, are driving up here, we got to start looking back to purchase market business. You know that already. My goal today, uh, whether it's morning or afternoon, or wherever you're watching this from, is to give you just a little bit of value and maybe one thing you can take away today uh, in terms of attracting more referral partners and home buyers that are productive, that are active in the market, that are looking. All right? So I want to give you some actionable value and a peek inside some new lead entry points that you can take deeper into more meaningful prospect and referral relationships. So let's just jump right in. What's the problem? What's not working in mortgage marketing? I hope to address that. Uh, I hope to engage with you guys and so for you to tell us you know, some thoughts too. We'll have some poll questions and things like that. So Beverly, when that happens, just go ahead and interrupt me and let me know if there's a, a poll question that we want to pull forward, okay? Okay, will do. Awesome. All right, so uh, for a lot of us and for a lot of our brands, a lot of brokers that we work with or represent, it's the same old, same old, right? Low trust, high dollar strategies, okay? These are things that we just give people when, you, when you're going to a convention or, you know, someone walks into an office and wants to hand out some things. I get eyeballs on the brand, you guys. I 100% understand that. We want to get as many eyeballs on your brand as possible. That's very important. But that's just a piece of the pie, especially in 2015 in this new era that we're in. We're going to talk about it, all right? So here's what most of us have done for a long time, all right, with limited results, blind flyers, blind rate sheets. And by blind, I mean we just drop these off. We'll go to an open, open house. We'll drop off some flyers with our picture on it. We'll drop off rate sheets to a, a real estate office and think that's going to get their business. Pins, magnets, notepads, calendars, mugs. You get the idea. Well, these things cost thousands of dollars. Okay, and then where's the beef? Where is the ROI, the return on investment from these activities? Now that's costing you or your broker hundreds to thousands of dollars a month. And there's so many other things, guys. I can't fit them all on a spreadsheet or excuse me, a slide here. But you get the idea that we're spending a lot of time, effort, money, and energy on things that are not netting us any real results in the marketplace. And so my goal today is to help you look at some new tools that might help you to, to attract these referral partners and agents that are producing, right, that, that have clients that are buying, looking, you know, doing purchase business deals. Uh, obviously, refis are, are, are leaving us, it seems like, okay? Uh, and then also, you know, end users that you can connect with directly. So the okay, connectors. I think we have, oh, sorry to interrupt, but I think we were supposed to do a, a poll question there. Let's do it. Um, Let's jump in. All right. Let me launch that one. Okay. So if you could just answer on your screen, what's the most frustrating thing about marketing to you? Um, we'll give you a few seconds to answer, and then we will announce the, uh, I'll read off the results so everyone can find out how everyone voted. Perfect. Cue up the Jeopardy music. <laughs>
All right, just going to give you a few more seconds to vote, and then we're going to close it up. Okay, going to close it up, and I am going to share the results with you right now. So 18% of you said seems gimmicky. 29% said can't prove ROI. 15% said too difficult to implement. And 39% said all of the above. Uh-oh, a lot of frustration. <laughs> Yeah, um, thanks for that, Beverly. Thanks, you guys, for um, for just joining in on that poll there. Yeah, you know, I, l let me just hit on that for a second. Marketing to a lot of people seems gimmicky, right? It seems gimmicky to me, and I'm a marketing guy. And the reason why it seems gimmicky is because people put in place marketing practices that worked, you know, 70 years ago, like when we first got TVs. Right, big brands like Procter and Gamble, right, were were doing advertisements and Colgate, right? These these products were doing advertises advertisements, and what you needed to do was just hit as many people as possible, and you had higher conversion rates because people saw new products. And in the industrial revolution, when marketing got its first real boom, right, when you can hit a lot of people from from small activities, hitting a lot of people, mass media, and you know, all those types of things, were just coming online. Obviously, we already had radio, but TV, the advent of TV and making it accessible to every home, created a new landscape for marketing. Don't want to go too deep into that, but here's the thing that I'll tell you. We're at an age today where marketing seems gimmicky because we're trying things that were you know that worked 70 and 80 years ago when you put a when you put a pin or a mug in front of someone to expect that they're going to send you a deal it's really not going to work again i uh, you know eyeballs on your brand sure that's great but don't expect that these activities are going to give you something and also there's a, a other cheesy marketing gimmicks to get someone to exchange their information for something I agree. There's a lot of stuff that's out there that's marketing. You can't prove the ROI, right? It's difficult to implement this stuff. And then some of you said 39% of you said all the above. That's killer. I agree, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on connecting. Connecting is as old school as you can get. Before the advent of any piece of technology, the connectors were the ones that are always going to do the best because they know how to, to, to deal with other people. Okay, so let's talk about this. In this new digitally connected economy, the best connectors, the best trust, respect, and authority creators are crushing it. But here's the deal, guys. So can you. If you're already doing, you know, above six figures uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, personal take home, that's awesome. We know that you're producing high numbers and all of that. And and, and even if you're doing millions of dollars in, in, in personal production every year in terms of take home, it, it doesn't make a difference. What I'm about to share with you today is going to apply. Okay, but yes, it still smells like work. <laughs> I don't care. You can be the best connector in the world. It's still going to take time and effort. I'm going to introduce you guys to to a top producer, a uh, top producing team leader, in fact, today. That's going to share some of his secret sauce on how he's doing the same exact things that that's going to help you advance in 2015 and beyond. So you need to have a digital marketing vehicle. What do vehicles do? They take us from this place to another place. But beyond that, there are systems built into the vehicle that make sure that you never, if your car is working okay, you never have to really look under the hood, right? We get the idea that as long as you service your car, you you know you put the right gas in it, you get changes when you, oil changes when you need it, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> okay. So outside of that, the, the analogy that I'm pointing to is you know you can get in the car, turn on the key, push your foot on the gas, turn the steering wheel, and you can get where you want to go. Well, you need the same type of vehicle in your marketing. I'm going to help break down a new framework for you guys. And please, take notes on this stuff because this is some value that I can give you that is a framework for you to begin thinking about your marketing differently. I hope to change your perspective and to persuade you a little bit around some of this gimmicky marketing stuff that's being done out there. So you have three different types of marketing. You have your front-end marketing, you have your in-stream marketing, and you have your back-end marketing. So let's dive into those real quick. Front-end marketing is, you know, that's the type of thing that you use when you don't have a lot of relationship with the person. So anything that you want to do on front end is things like uh, connecting with folks on Facebook, walking open houses and shaking hands. To call this is the, you, you, the first process of meeting a new client. All of the activities, I don't care how you do that, whether it's text messaging services, email marketing campaigns, when you do those types of things just up front online, just so you know, they're going to have lower conversion rates because obviously they don't know who you are yet. 
So the more connection, remember the connectors are advancing, the more connection you can create up front with your front end marketing, the higher chance you'll have of a conversion with that prospect, that referral partner, okay? So in-stream marketing are, is a strategy for those who decide to engage with you. So the, those are the folks that go, oh, I like what you gave me, I like your email, I like that piece of content, I like meeting you, you were nice. Okay, well, however you meet the person from your front end efforts, your in-stream efforts are the things that keep you top of mind with them, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to we want to deal with that client when they're in that you know six months to a year time frame that they're looking uh, to purchase a home or the referral partner all the time, right? As they're working working with buyers and whatnot, all right? So and then the back end is a strategy to drive referrals and reviews so you're not easily forgotten post sale. So a lot of us do in-stream well, a lot of us do front-end well, but a lot of us do not do back-end well. Like for example, do you have a process and a program to generate, and a vehicle rather, to generate referrals for you? See, a lot of us, we beg and we ask, you know, can you write me a Yelp review, can you post this up on Redfin, right, these types of activities. That's all good, but the chances are extremely low because you don't have a vehicle. Okay. You have a onesie, twosie opportunity that you're sharing that with someone, but it's not a vehicle. So we're looking at getting a vehicle. You must drive these three marketing components to be successful round and round, okay? Awesome. I'm getting some feedback in the background. I don't know if you guys are hearing that, but I'm hearing some feedback. I hear FYI. a little bit, so I, I don't know who that is. Um, we do have a poll question right now, though, so maybe we can uh, do that and you know hopefully resolve those audio issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been messaging me that the sound is, is, is uh, not so good on the computer. I'm not sure why, but if you're having a problem with the sound on the computer, if you could try to call in instead if that's possible. A few people have given me feedback that that is helping and it does sound better. Okay, we're going to launch our next poll question right now. Okay. Do you have a digital marketing vehicle? You can answer on the screen, and then I'll share the results with you in a few seconds. Okay, I'm going to close it up now, and then I'm going to share the results with you. So, 55% uh, said email campaign newsletter, 14% said online ads on Google or Facebook ads, 3% uh, said SMS mobile marketing, and 28% said none. Wow, great. Thanks for sharing that, you guys. Yeah, so email and phone is the, is the landscape of most loan officers. Okay, so we understand that you know doing that is is netting you results, and email is still king. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Email is still effective. Okay, online ads are are effective. SMS marketing obviously is effective. We're going to talk about that today, you guys. There's some people that are blowing it up using SMS marketing campaigns. Ninety four, I think I think there's a number. Ninety four percent open rates. I mean, it makes sense. How many how many text messages do you get on your phone that you don't open? Okay, obviously if these text messages are from people that you know, like, and trust, then obviously it's going to be stronger. It's not going to seem gimmicky and marketing spam stuff uh, if, if you're con actually connecting with this pe these people. So we're going to talk about that here in a second. So your marketing vehicle should drive people through a systematic process. So again, your car has systems built inside, your electrical system, right? Your your drivetrain, right? Your engine, right? All of the things inside and cooling, all of these types of systems that are built inside your car. So for you, all you do is open the door, get in, sit down, turn the ignition, put your foot on the gas, hands on the steering wheel, seat belt, and you're off. Hopefully not in that order. Seat belt first. <laughs> but you get the point I'm driving, okay? You need to also drive your marketing efforts through a systematic process. And it definitely, in 2015, needs to be automated in some capacity. We automate for high reach. Write this down. This is very important stuff for you. That's how you're going to get this high reach, okay? Drive reviews and referrals, okay? That's so, so important. This is high touch. Do you have a tool or a mechanism, a vehicle really, to drive referrals and reviews on your behalf? If you don't, you need to consider one. 
Don't just ask people, you know, in the blind or in the in the rear. Say, oh, you know, actually, uh, could you could you write me a review for me, or could you give me a referral? Build it into your business and strategize the vehicle, the system is what we're talking about for doing that. I'm going to give you some ideas. We're going to hear from Jim Black in a few. He's going to give you some ideas as well. But if you have a system for this, it's going to do so much better for you. And obviously, it needs to be simple to deploy. When we asked the poll question earlier, a lot of you said it was difficult to implement. Well, we get that. We believe that your marketing should be simple to deploy, and it should be quantifiable and trackable for ROI. I am so done with marketing efforts out there that you know I spent a thousand bucks and you know hope for the best. Guys, aren't we done with that? I mean, we're professionals, okay? There's so many tools out here to quantify your efforts if you drive them to the right resource. Again, I can't give someone a mug or a cup or an email or drop off a rate sheet and expect that that partner is going to want to work with me or expect that end user is going to is going to do a loan through me. I can't expect that. But when you have quantifiable and trackable tools to help you prove the ROI, then you know, ah, when I do this effort, I get this result. And you can really start looking at your sales cycle differently. All right, so here's the strategy for today. You need to build and find a digital marketing vehicle for yourself. And by digital marketing vehicle, I mean three of them. I mean a front-end digital marketing vehicle, an in-stream digital market marketing vehicle, and a back-end digital marketing vehicle. All right, so let's understand this marketing reach and ROI a bit better. I'm a transparent leader in marketing, so I'm going to show you how much value I bring to the table, and I'm going to be able to prove it to you because I use tools and things that show me what type of reach I'm having, and then that turns into ROI once I understand how I'm engaging these clients. All right, so your marketing efforts must land in the heads, hands, and hearts of your intended target when they are prepared, big word, right, to purchase a home. You also have to have a way to measure the effectiveness against the cost. So let's just stop guessing, okay? Find a tool that's simple and quantifiable. There's many out there that you can that you can look at. You can ask us for some questions. We have one. We'll share ours in a bit. But find something that's going to help you to do this, to solve the problem, all right? We're going to jump in. Beverly, how are we doing? We got any more polls coming up or are we doing okay? Uh, we have a poll in a few slides, but not right now, unless you okay, want to do it right now. We can. Perfect. No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. All right. Okay. So here's what, here's what you need to create out there. You, you guys, this is going to be so simple, but it's so important. You need to create trust. You need to create respect. You need to create authority, okay, and give more value up front. I didn't say give more tchotchkes. Give more swag. Right, conventions, pen stuff, give more value. You have to do this through connecting with people, okay? And we'll talk about some some methods, new methods to do that here in a bit. So let's uh, let's uh, here's a question I got for you, right? Top three LOs, the issues from from the top 50 realtors. Here's what they said that I want to make sure that you have an idea to see. I want my loan officer to stop telling me how to do my job. I want my mortgage person to answer the damn phone. Guys, I'll leave that in your own hands. You know who you are. <laughs> and I want them to help me grow my business. So guys, they want your help. So our goal is how do we position ourselves to build trust, respect, and authority in front of producing referral partners to give us business, to, to refer us, right? Well, if, if we do these things, these are the top three. Right? If we do these things well, that will definitely help. And then if we can build trust, respect, and authority with them, that will definitely move the needle. All right. So our poll question is actually related to that slide, so I think we okay. can pop it in right here. Sure. And that is, what do agent referral partners want from their LO? I like some of these choices. You know which one I would choose right now. <laughs> definitely more donuts. but. Let's see uh, what everyone else chooses. Oh, I'm so curious. You guys are going to have fun with this one, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close it up now. Let's see. Oh, most of you want better communication tools and service. You took us seriously, 91%. Okay. Seven percent yeah. want a hug. I'm sorry, seven percent of you. I'm I'm virtually giving you a hug right now. Seems Only seven like percent want a hug. That's yeah. it. 
and 3% more more donuts. I'm with them. Zero <laughs> percent said more race sheep. Yeah, yeah. Well, good job, you guys. Obviously, you get the point of this. This was one that's got a little tongue in cheek here. We're trying to be funny here a little bit and say, yeah, obviously you got you got to give more more value. You've got to give you know better communication and 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 have some systems in place, right? That's what your referral partners are wanting. And if you're looking for new referral partners, you already know what they're wanting up front. So how do you build your business to reflect the things, the value that they're going to want up front from you? How do you give that to them and up front and position yourself with those things? Well, it's connection, all right? You got to make great connections on and offline. Guys, it's both and. I'm not saying you need to be the Facebook ad guru or the Google AdWords Google, you know, guru and doing all of these types of things and then don't do anything offline or vice versa. Stay away from, you know, off online stuff because you're you're the real type that only does referrals and you're in person and you forget all that online crap. We hear both sides all the time. Guys, it's both and. It's 2015. Do you do you realize your brand can be crushed if someone reflects on you negatively online and it spreads virally? That's not the type of viral marketing we want. Okay, so if we don't protect our online reputation management and build trust, respect, and authority in online and offline communities, then we're missing the boat. Well, let's talk about what's working with this stuff. Okay. Email and phone calls are still king. I said this earlier, but but they're both stale solutions for recipients who don't know you. Again, so if, if all I'm going to do is send out a bunch of emails and you know buy leads and send out a bunch of emails to people, obviously the spam is going to be super high. Um, you you can get in some trouble if you didn't get those leads correctly and have an opportunity of you know opting those folks in. But again, if people don't know you, digital marketing sucks because you haven't connected with them. Now, digital marketing is great when you actually connect with the folks. There's some slushing around. I don't know what that is. Uh, if we can get that to stop. Um, thanks so much. So um, those solutions obviously work really well when you're connecting with people. And you can connect with people digitally online. It does help, OK? And referrals is really, really, obviously, really keen. And you know that already. But how do we know that stuff is working right now. So here, here's some averages for open rates. Okay, email is 20, 30 percent open rates, and this is across you know national averages. Direct mail, if you do any direct mailing stuff for your brand, your broker does direct mail stuff. It's one to two percent. Okay, the text. Hey, I'm getting a lot of noise, paper noise in the background. I don't know what that is. If we can just stop moving, that'd be so helpful. Um, it's, it's really, really loud on the other end. Okay, so uh, text is 94 percent, and <clears throat> you see that. It's underutilized. 94% open rates. What if you had what if you had a system or a tool to reach people that you're already connecting with that have opted in to talk to you, to receive communications from you, and from time to time you send automated text messages from you. And, and it's simple things like, hey, this is Sherry, just wanted to connect with you, hope all things are well. Hey, I got this, and you send them to a link that shows some types of value that they can look at directly on their smartphone. Guys, people that are doing this type of thing right now are crushing it. Because most people think, ah, text messaging, that doesn't work. No, people want the content. It's not the text message itself, obviously. But if you're connecting with people, key word, if you're connecting with people, when they receive that text from you and they already know you, that's going to be significant. All right. You need to be everywhere better. And that's the bottom line. So you need to create better ways for referral partners and purchase clients to enter and engage your communication channels. The reason we have an octopus up here is I want you to think about all of the inputs, all of the places where folks can meet you digitally, online, offline, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about some of those places. They can meet you on social media for the first time, right? They can engage with you on social media, right? Just so you know, social media has a 6% organic reach. So back in the wild, wild west of, of Social sites like Facebook and Twitter, right? Instagram, even that's a it's an up and comer right now. But the so what I mean by organic reach is when you post something on your page, right? You think it's going to reach all of your fans, guys? It's not. Facebook Facebook is a fifty billion dollar behemoth, and the reason for that is because they're a native advertising platform. See, when we all got on Facebook and we thought it's about showing what you ate today and how many times you did CrossFit, right, or not, right? When we do things like that, we're thinking it's it's moving the needle for us. We're thinking people are seeing our stuff. They're not. 
guys, Facebook's only showing your marketing efforts to 6%. Everything else is pay to play. All right? So all of the other social sites, and Google included, are pay to play environments, meaning you have to put an ad up and target that ad to a specific demographic, and it can already be your followers, but even still, your own followers you'd have to do this with to, to reach the type of folks that you want to reach, all right? So social media is a place. Referral partnerships are definitely a place, right, to engage better, right? Your email marketing, some of you are doing that. SMS marketing, we're hinting at that a little bit today. Obviously, open houses and local events, right? If you're the community expert and community leader and everyone knows you and you provide value and you generate trust, respect, and authority, I cannot believe that you won't do more deals just with that alone. And, I, and I'm just saying, say you have the, the normal types of you know, programs that everybody else, your your tradi traditional lender, right? You have traditional programs. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be doing outstanding, at least performing 10% better year over year. All right? So you need to automate as many processes as you can. You need to automate your social media. There's scheduling sites out there and then pay for advertising. If you have any questions on this, connect with me later. I'll help you out with this, all right? Your referral partnerships, do you have that vehicle to drive reviews of you? So, for example, say you've worked with the same two or three referral partners for 15 years. How many times have they reviewed you? I mean, if they're sending you that many deals and they love you, why not get them to review you and to attract more referral partners using them as your re referral, right? So you have to start thinking this way. How can you better utilize your email marketing, your SMS marketing? How can you use the open houses? Many of us are like, I'm not even walking open houses anymore. It's a waste of time. While other of us are going, no, it's not. <laughs> because those people, guess what? At an open house, when you're offline, quote unquote, that's when you want to go online. Think about this. When you're at, at an open house meeting, folks, how can you turn those activities at the open house into online interaction? Well, there's a tool out there, and a couple of them actually, but there's some tools out there to help you do this better. All right? And then obviously local events are, are you know, a great way to engage. Just, you have to. All right? All right, so I'm going to tell you kind of a quick fun thing that happened to me. This is a personal story. Uh, from two birthday parties. This is around my 30th birthday, and I did a social experiment. Beverly told you up front, I am a self-professed marketing nerd, so even on my friendships and, and relationships that I have, I'll do some marketing stuff just to see right, how these things work out. Call this my own personal split test. Here's what happened. Um, I created an invitation for my 30th birthday solely on social media, Okay, and I, at the time, had a couple thousand people following me. I've, I've since then blocked a lot of things on Facebook because it got out of hand and people were like, hey, why aren't you getting back to me? And I'm like, I can't. That's so too much. Right? But I created this invitation. I did no personal invites. I mean, I didn't even invite my brother. I just put everything right. I just said, hmm, Facebook shows every I don't even remember birthdays anymore. I don't have to. I don't put them in my calendar or any of that kind of stuff because Facebook does all that stuff for me. Right? So since that's automated, I said, huh, I wonder how I can put this to the test. So on my 30th birthday, I did this. Here's the second thing. I had, well, two birthdays, right? Same event. Uh, sorry, two separate events. I said that incorrect. Two separate events, same birthday, all right? Same birthday year. So the other one, I picked up the phone and personally invited every person individually. Two different parties, two different locations, right? But same idea. So which one do you think? I mean, I, I love in the, in the chat, just for, if you guys can go over into the chat bar and just put, which one do you think had more people show up? The Facebook one, a couple thousand people, or picking up the phone, personally inviting every person. Go ahead and chat now. And Beverly, if you can share as that's coming across the chat, what people are sharing on that. So go ahead now, guys. A or B? Which one do you think had more folks show up? I don't know. The B's just come in, so I can't. I mean, I'm seeing mostly B's, I guess. Okay, great. Good, good. Well, you guys get it. Yeah. Even though I invited way more people on social media, and these people knew me already. These were my friends and families and connections on social media. Hey, I'm throwing a party. It's going to be at this place, this date. You know, sign up. Right? And this was back in, well, well it doesn't matter. Reveal my age. This was back in 2010. Okay? So, uh, by the way, B works way more, and B will still work way more in your business because you're making a personal connection. Okay. So what do you think would have happened if I did both social media and personal connections? 
And that's what we're talking about today. It's not, it's not either or, you guys. It's both and. You need to engage on and offline for best results, okay? I hope that point is loud and clear. So here's a new tool that you can check out. I mean, you, you, you've got to really look at this. If Some of you have already heard of it and some of you have not, but let me tell you about it. It's called Nextdoor. So here's what I want every single person to do. Okay, I am no affiliate. I get no commission. This is not anything. It has nothing to do with me personally. I don't own the business. I'm not a shareholder. Maybe I should be thinking about that. Um, Nextdoor is a new social media platform, and if you're a loan officer and you're not on this, you are going to be leaving money on the table. Nextdoor is a place where neighbors go in and use this site to connect with each other. Yes, you heard that correct. And guess what? Nextdoor understands the power of the neighborhood local market that they're willing to give you a $25 gift certificate for referring Amazon is, right, but obviously Nextdoor is paying for it, to give you a $25 gift card to get someone else in an adjoining neighborhood on this app, on this platform. It's, it'll, it'll be on your uh, Android phone or your iOS, your iPhone device. Okay, obviously it's a web app, so it's on the computer. And it's just a new social platform, and people are connecting. I'm, I'm on it, and I'm just going, oh, my goodness. This is like being on Facebook before Facebook had an advertising portal. When, when you posted something on Facebook back in the day, it was 100% reach. Everybody saw what you posted. Well, that's what Nextdoor does, you guys. Okay, So this is so um, in encouraging for the market because um, public utilities and services like police officers are using – this is for – I live in Orange County in, in California here, but you can see – if you just look at this really quick, even the local authorities are engaging on this app. They think it's brilliant, okay? Because when you connect neighbors to each other, homeowners, hint, hint, when you connect neighbors to each other, right, people are understanding who's moving, what houses are for sale. People, I mean, it's crazy the types of conversation. You guys think it's just Facebook, a lot of you. Oh, we're just talking on Facebook or LinkedIn. Well, guess where the homeowners and renters are talking? They're talking here. So engage on Nextdoor. That's just a wanted to give that to you because I didn't know if you knew about Nextdoor yet. Um, but there's not a lot of, um, call it, business activity on this app. There are a few folks, even in my community, I'm going, that guy's super smart. Realtors, you know, we're talking to, talking to homeowners and people and, hey, doing little meetups for dog walking and all kinds of different things so people can get to know them. And guess what? Because you're on this app, they validate. You have to validate through your phone where you live. And so it's really, truly people who live in the communities. And you can be on there. And I'm not saying you're going to make a killing from being on this. You have to always connect and have to engage. But, guys, the point I'm driving at is it's a new place for you to reach out to clients and folks that who don't know you, but it's high trust because they go, oh, if you're on here, you live somewhere close to me. You are my neighbor. That's hence next door. Okay? A lot of interaction. So check that out. I, I really wanted to give that to you guys. So how do you do this? How do you build trust? How do you build respect? How do you build authority? How do you give more value? Well, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to Jim Black so you can hear it first from a top producing, team leading LO who is doing all the strategies that we're talking about. He's helped 3,500 homeowners, and you guys that have been in the industry, you know that's a lot of deals. Okay, so you're talking to someone who knows what they're talking about, and I'll, I'll let him, I don't want to steal his thunder or anything, but he's been doing this for quite some time, I think 15 years in the business, and he's helped a ton of people. Okay, and he loves to do this. So, Jim, if you are there, I'd love for you to jump in and, and say hello to everyone. Hey, Elijah. Hey, Beverly. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Awesome. Thanks for being on the call, Jim. So we're going to jump right in. We're going to do a little Q&A style, guys, so, so Jim can uh, share some of his winnings and tools and strategies with you. First up, Jim, tell us, what's your secret sauce? I mean, you're killing it as an LO, right, especially in the digital age. What's your secret sauce to do this now? It's a great question, and um, I find that no matter what I do, I need to be the source of important information and add value for the home buyer experience for both agents and buyers. I want them to come to me with questions that they have. I want to add the value that helps them make the decision to buy or to learn more about the process. I want to be that resource. I do not want to be 
a rate quote. I don't want to be a loan program. I want to be the resource for trust uh, when it comes to real estate. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Next up, what's the best practice for connecting to people online that you don't know? So to me, the bottom line in what we do for a living as a loan officer or a realtor is that people are going to work with people that have same, similar interests in both professional or personal ways. So I try my best to find and leverage that common interest. If it's on LinkedIn looking to see what college someone went to or what interests they have or who they may know commonly between us, or if it's the fact that they live in a certain town or there's a restaurant down the street from where they work that we both like to go to, I'm trying to find a way to find an interest that creates a, um, a unique a brand to that person to know that I am a real person, that I'm here to help them both professionally, but also I am a person that lives in the community. Yeah, and Jim, thanks for that. What I hear from you guys, and I, and I hope, hope you've heard this today on, the, on this call, it's really high connection. And so Jim is saying leverage every opportunity you have right, to create high connection and create that affinity and create you know, inputs of interest to, to connect with one another. Fantastic. Next question. What's the best tip you can offer other LOs around attracting new referral partners and home buyers in the social media age? Right, a lot of us are looking at social media as, yeah, it's just it's a great place to like see what everybody's doing, but nah, social media is not going to make me money, right? So, what's the best tip you can other offer other LOs around attracting folks online? So, I have a couple of those, Elijah, that I'd like to talk about. Um, one is just, and no matter what you do, whatever process you implement or plan or marketing tool you use, you have to be consistent. You have to follow the approach. Um, be targeted on your certain audience and your goal. Like what is your message about? What are you trying to get out of this? Who are you trying to get that message to? Um, things do not happen overnight in our industry. I wish they did. But what we have to do is really take a consistent approach to be there, be available, and also share value, valuable information. Again, going back to becoming that resource of trust for that client or, or business partner. Um, I, I equate it back to the builder business days where you could go out to a builder track and people that went out there infrequently or randomly did not get the same traction as a loan officer that was always there at 2 p.m. on Friday because the salespeople would know he would be there, he or she would be there, and be able to have things to help with their business right there on the spot. So again, being consistent. Along with being consistent, you want to find a way to stand out in the crowd and keep your brand, keep your brand unique and loud. Um, I don't like to go with the grain. I like to go against the grain. It uh, doesn't mean I'm doing anything entirely different, but it means the things that I'm talking about, the information I'm sharing, is presented in a way that's different and stands out and it sticks a lot stronger than the traditional way of doing it. So I'm always trying to find a way to stand out and add value and, and be loud. And the last one I would say, the last part of it I would say, Elijah, is complement what your other partners that you're trying to work with are focused on doing. Don't reinvent things. If your real realtor partner is focused on a first time home buyer seminar in your neighborhood, well, why don't you align yourself with their same common goals and interests to create really a one plus one equals three mindset where you're able to really add exponentially more value, more impact, and you have a raging fan doing it with you, your partner that can help bring you opportunity. So I'm always looking at those are the ways that I'm trying to um, get the most out of attracting new business partners or um, home buyers in today's market. Thanks for that, Jim. And, and I want to I want to hint at this, guys, everyone. What you heard from Jim is he talked about the marketing vehicle. When he was talking about the kind of the builder business days, you guys, He's talking about the marketing vehicle, being there every Friday at 2 p.m. See, that's what I mean, that consistency, the vehicle that you're using to drive these tools and opportunities, it's a vehicle because it's a system. So what systems do you have in place to employ these strategies? Great one, Jim. Awesome. All right, how do you build trust, respect, and authority with referral partners and home buyers who don't know you? Ooh, this is a good one. This is the secret sauce one that that I think you always stay humble to keep learning and growing from. Um, for referral partners, I'll start with them. I look at ways that I want to identify a way to add value. Why would a realtor want to even 
talk to me if I cannot improve, add value, or enhance their ability to help clients and, and create more opportunity for them. Um, you know, an average loan officer will talk about rates and, and all that stuff, and we have the lowest rate, and we can close in, you know, two days. Well, a great loan officer, loan officer talks about innovation, vision, and opportunity in ways to really attract, attract that. Um, from a home buyer's perspective, there's just one key theme that I think is so consistent in whatever um, avenue you're looking to do business is identify the need and listen and, and repeat the need that they're telling you and reiterate their concerns so that they know that you're listening to them. It, uh, I think a lot of people in our industry um, sometimes make the mistake of talking a lot more than listening. And I think that's really one of those key things and core values of a great loan officer or realtor is listening to the needs of the person. If someone doesn't want to live in the house for, for 30 years, they may not need a 30-year fix. Um, you know, if, if someone's looking to expand their family in a year or two, they may want to look at larger homes if I'm a realtor thinking for that buyer. So that's just a, a thing I would think is just identify the need for the home buyer and also add value to a referral partner. That's good. And, and, I'll, and I'll add to that too, you know, guys, trust building is so, so vital, right? The more trust that you have with a client and a referral partner, the easier it will be. Obviously, you'll if they trust you, the easier it will be to say, hey, let's do this or hey, let's take a look at that. And they'll they'll have value in that because they trust you, right? So building trust is, is so old school, quote unquote, but it will never go away. We, all, we know we need that. Well, respect is an interesting one um, because, you know, when you look at, say, a referral partner and you know, there's not a respect there in a relationship. Why are they going to send deals to you if they don't respect you? Well, think about you. You need to take personal inventory and go, how can I better build trust? How can I better build respect? We well, here's one key thing: give it, give trust, give respect. Obviously, a lot of these things you've got to know what you're talking about. <laughs> you can't just be, you know, two months into the business and and trying to put together, you know, pricing and programs for folks and and you know. It can go really hairy, obviously. Okay, so you need to know what you're talking about. And authority is one of those things that's really, really key and critical. You've got to obviously be knowledgeable about the industry and the areas that you serve, the laws, and all these types of things. But authority happens in in a really interesting place for the end users and referral partners. It happens through a process called social proof, the fastest. Okay, if you want to be seen as an authority, that's why I said offline and online. Now, again, if you wrote a book or you did some of these things that say you're, you're author authority, right? If you've done something, you have a niche in the market that, that you do a certain thing differently, right? Obviously, you can be an authority through that. But I'm talking about general authority building. One thing that, that obviously you can do is focus on what ways can I build social proof, reviews, referrals, these types of things. And so I can show people these things and position myself as this authority. They'll see, ah. I'm going to work with Jim. Look at all this activity he's got on him. Look what all these people have said about him. Well, then you automatically will get trust and respect if people see third-party validation, hence authority. Good. Jim, i got a couple more for you. So what technology tools do you personally use to grow your business currently? And then how are you using them? Yeah, great question. So I'll get into a little bit of detail on a couple of them. Um, first one, I really like to use LinkedIn just to make sure I know I connect with people if I'm involved with a transaction or I, I'm writing an offer, if I'm doing a pre-approval for a client, I want to make sure if I know that listing agent or even the, the buyer's agent that I can do a better job connecting with them. Um, also, I use a really good CRM tool. Um, CRM tools are really important to have that are integrated into your origination platform. There's a myriad of those programs out there, obviously. Um, but what I found that's a really exciting one for me that I'm implementing and I've done it more recently, like in the last four to five months, is implementing a mobile application, and it keeps everybody and keeps me top of mind for clients and partners. I want to be available 24-7. I want to be available when someone needs me. I want to be kind of like the Batman of loans. When the bat signal goes up, I want to be available. <laughs> I don't want to send out, you know, I don't want to send out 39 spam emails about you know, home recipes on how to make apple cobbler or, or some economic news that really doesn't pertain to the client's needs because 
if again if I'm not listening to their needs, I'm not hitting them and I'm not probably adding the most value I can and I'm probably not going to be as influential um, or trusted in that process of buying a home or referring to a good loan officer. So again, I want to be available 24 hours a day. I want to be on an application if I can on someone's personal phone where they check you know 85 times an hour. Um, if I can be top of mind and right in front of them as an image on their phone, I can really um, get a lot more traction and retention and pull through on my clients. I'm not having to do as many um, you know, phone calls, or reach outs of checking in because I can use this tool to see when someone's logged in. I can use this tool to see when a realtor has shared my contact information with a client. So that way I can be prepared when I, the time is right and I get a call or email to thank the real for, realtor but also rein, reinforce that realtor's relationship and brand to tell the client, wow, you're lucky to be working with this realtor. They're really strong in this marketplace and I don't know how you found them but you're in a good, you're in a great position with this realtor and I'm happy to be part of that team. So again, I like a specific tool um, which we talked about a few times today. Um, the mobile application, again, I'm a big fan of using Lender Pro Link. Lender Pro Link is a very viable tool that allows me to have my information customized um, as however I want to see fit to be able to, to forward them, to be able to stick onto a client or a realtor and be real time for them again, like I said. Awesome. Thanks for that, uh, Jim. You know, uh, guys, we, we obviously have a tool out there in the market. Uh, we're, I'm not here to pitch you. I'm, I'm here to give some value to you so, towards some things that you just need to take a look at, right? You need to get your marketing vehicles lined up, okay? So your, your front-end marketing tool, well, guess, you know, obviously we have, you know, a way to address that with Lender Pro Link. Okay, because we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm not, I, I don't want to pitch you, okay? I want to give you some value around some things that you need to think about. You need to think about your in-stream marketing. You need to think about your back-end marketing. I don't want to create these systems for you, right? We have a tool that does, obviously, and does all the three things. Jim's using that tool, of course. But the thing that I want to do is, is kind of point you to, if you do these things better, you'll win more origination. You'll do more originations. You'll win more deals, okay? So let me let me let me go to this part of the the, the um, presentation, you guys. There's some good news in all of this, and it's that you don't have to be a marketing expert. Okay, you don't have to put in crazy hours of your time learning how to do this stuff. It's it, right, and there are solutions that's going to help you bridge the gap. Okay, we're just one of them. So the big million dollar question that you might have for me is Elijah, how? Okay, you're saying I need to get this marketing vehicle. You're saying, and Jim's saying that, you know, there's some tools out there that you guys are using. Okay, so what, what, what is it? Is it economical? Does it cost a gazillion dollars? And is it simple, right? Is it the gimmicky stuff that we talked about? Obviously, it's not going to be, right? There's some new technology out here we want to introduce you guys to if you haven't seen it. And here, is, here it is, our strategy. It's an integrated approach. We're going to take everything that you do from your email signature to your newsletters, business cards, rate sheets, all your social media stuff, review sites, your Yelp and your Redfin, your online and offline efforts, from going to the Little League field to talking to someone on Twitter. We're going to put all of those activities into one place. We're going to drive it all to you. How we're going to drive it all to you guys is, like Jim said, on your own personalized and branded, or non-branded if you can't brand, right, with your with your shop, wherever you're at, but online and offline connection through this digital app that's yours, your face, your name, your brand, your logo, your information, all driven to you, all of these things. So imagine on your email signature, you have something that says download my app. First of all, to a referral partner, when you say you have your own app, it makes you look just that much more savvy to them in their eyes. To the end user, when you say, go to the Google Play Store and download my app, they're like, download your app? Right? But yeah, there's some app programs out there, but trust me, you've never seen anything like this before. Right? So here's what we offer. We offer uh, your own app, right, that is co-brandable. Now we're calling those advertising partners. We are fully RESPA compliant. We've gone through all the legal processes on, on our end. Obviously, we'll work with any compliance officer in any brand or any company because we have a, we, we have a way that we feel uh, really strongly about and it's validated. Right? We're, we're working with some teams in Wells Fargo. We're working with some teams in Bank of America. Right? And so those two brands, national brands, and I can give exposure to many others. I'm not trying to single them out. Right? 
they've said, okay, well, you know, you're just using it like this. That's all right. You're not putting their face, their brand, their logo on things. It's just your tool. So, for example, if I go to Yahoo and say, I want to be shown to this page, to these real estate officers that are looking at this page here because that's their interest point, and if I put a banner up there, is that compliant? Well, absolutely, because there's no, there's, there's no issues. As long as the disclosures and all the proper things are there, there's no issues. Point is, there's no issues to market anywhere that you want to market as long as you're not doing things that are outside of compliance. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start, you know, so you can stand out with your own fully compliant, RESPA compliant app, right? We're going to deploy that on the Google Play Store and iOS devices. It is a personalized front-end marketing tool. Remember we talked about front-end marketing? Okay, well, this tool drives front-end interactions. You look savvy as a loan officer. It's going to give you marketing control with simple and valuable analytics. No more gimmicks, full transparency. Like Jim said, when anybody clicks anywhere on your app, they can, you can see all of that activity. All right? You don't have to have referral partners on it. It's yours. But, guys, let's think. Referral partners are not just real estate agents. They're CPAs. Divorce attorneys, right? Financial planners, insurance agents, go on and on and on. Well, guess what? All of them can have an app just like yours referring you. Okay, that's called an advertising partner, and we'll talk to you more about that if you have any questions, but that's how we do it. All right? And then again, unlimited advertising partnerships. I just talked about that. So what we want to do is we just want to put this in front of you so you know that there is another tool out there that you can use that's going to help you move the needle. Here's what our portal looks like on the back end. It's a one, two, three, four, five step process. It takes about five minutes to do upload your photos, upload your information, your NMLS numbers, put the disclosures up there properly and, and we will upload that and send the it's called an APK file, but we'll send that file up to Google. We'll verify that you you know you're a real person. Uh, and so by doing that, Google says, yes, publish this app, and in 24 to 48 hours, you will have a new front-end marketing tool to hand out to the entire community and say, hey, um, check me out. I've got my own app. And again, a fully integrated approach. We're going to put this everywhere. We're going to offline and online, and it's so easy to share. Here's what a dashboard looks like so you can see kind of peaks and spikes of your activities. And like we said, this, this particular app is just one of our demo accounts, 157 downloaders. Uh, 3,000 3, views, and right, so everyone is downloading this app for free, okay, front-end marketing tool. There's a cost associated for the app that you would pay, right, but the app to, to the end users that are going to Google Play, they'll just look up your name, perhaps, um, and get this app for free, okay? So here's, let's, let's get straight square brass tacks here. How much does it cost, all right? So you need to stop wasting thousands of dollars doing mugs and all flyers and all these other things that you can't ROI and look at a tool that you can ROI. It's 35 bucks a month and $360 a year. Guys, that's less than a dollar a day, right, to have this technology to be able to tell your new referral partners, hey, listen, I've got a place where you can get your own app, right, and partnering with me, we can, we can work together and I can show you and tell that referral partner if you want to do you know, co-branding, co-marketing types of things, you can tell them their face would be shown on your app. Their logo would be shown. So when they download that app to their friends and their networks, it's them. So it's like now you have a tool to give referral partners, and, and you're not technically giving it. We are because the app itself is free. You're paying for advertising. That's only if you co-brand. Standalone, $35 a month, $360 a year, it's just your app. It's yours. Okay, so you don't have to co-brand. It's fully compliant. You don't have to. If your compliance department says, "Oh no, 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 you can't do that," that's fine. Then you don't have to do that. Okay. So uh, I got a special offer for you. We're coming to the end. I just want to make sure you know about that. We want to obviously thank um, NMP and Beverly for allowing us to talk to you about this today, you guys, and give you some value. Here's what we want to do. If you enroll today, we'll also throw in. 10 referral partner apps if you can co-brand that means we'll set up you tell us the names and numbers we'll call these folks on your behalf we'll get their apps set up obviously you have to have your app set up in advance so we can tie them to your account tie them to your app right if we wanted to do that you can let us know we'll throw in 10 of those for you done for you uh, services and 200 marketing credits that's a $399 value Okay, that we're saying if you sign up on the yearly pro today, we'll go ahead and throw those services in. So that means 10 of your referral partners will get their new apps. And all of the people that download their app, you get all those leads because you're an advertising partner. 
Okay, and then also you get full time access to our client success team. We're not one of those software companies out there, you guys, that you you know you have to like email for support. You just pick up the phone and call us. We have our our, our uh, client success associate program. Their whole job is to be your marketing concierge. Any question that you have around marketing, around Facebook ad advertisements, to you know, how do I get my app to do this, to fully onboarding you and getting your referral partner set up and all this kind of stuff, we'll do for you, okay? So just so you know about that, that's all included for the $360 a year. And if, you're, if you want to take advantage of this offer, here's all you need to do. You need to go to this link here, service.lenderprolink.com forward slash sign up. But here's the deal. In order to get this offer, you need to do that today. All right, so if you're interested in that, you want to take a look at it, you want to leverage this tool like Jim Black and several other hundred LOs around the country are doing that, um, please take a look at this. I think it'll help you. It'll address front end, in stream, and back end marketing all in one. All right? All right, guys, well, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope you got some value in terms of saying, okay, I know now I need to look at these three marketing strategies to increase my referral partner relationships. And, you know, as we, these refis are going away, man, I'm going to need to fo focus on my purchase business. Well, here's a way to help you to do that. You heard from Jim Black today say the, the, the ways in which he does this and he finds it effective using a tool like Lender Pro Link. Thanks, Jim, for your vouch uh, on that. Uh, we're having a ton of fun, you guys, as a, as a brand out here in the marketplace, and we hope that you see the value in working with a company like Lender Pro Link. So thanks for being on the call, you guys. Thanks to NMP. Thank you, Beverly Bolnick, for, for allowing us to join you in this call and hosting the call for us today. And we appreciate all of you. Best of luck and much success to you in the marketplace in 2015. Take care. Bye now.